Hi, welcome to Naresh IT. This is Sai. In this today's session, we are going to discuss about what are the steps we need to follow to communicate with database actually. Steps to communicate Java application with database. So, what are the steps we need to follow to communicate Java application with database? Let us discuss about this point. Primary one is loading a driver, second one is registering driver with driver manager, establishing connection with driver to the database, performing database transactions using driver, closing connection with driver to the database. So, these are the steps we need to follow in order to communicate Java application with database. So, loading a driver, registering driver with driver manager, establishing connection with driver to the database, performing database transactions using driver, closing connection with driver to the database. Now, in our today's session, we will discuss about the first two steps, how to load a driver and how to register a driver with driver manager. We will see the steps. Generally, loading a driver, we are going to perform either by using new operator or by using class dot for name statement. So, you can go for any of the way. Using new operator, we can load a driver. Using class dot for name also, you can load a driver. Loading means your class metadata is encapsulated inside java dot lang dot class objects. So, there are two ways of loading a class into the memory in java. One is by using new operator, second way is using class dot for name. First one is a static loading, the second one is dynamic loading. That means, for example, if you say a o b is equals to new a. If you observe the statement here, a o b is equals to new a. Whenever if you are using a new operator, always you must pass the class name there only. You must decide the class name there only. That means, at the time of developing the program, whenever if you are using new operator, always we need to decide which class you need to use. So, the new operator creates an object to the S class, you know that. Before creating object to the S class, internally it verifies whether that class is loaded in the memory or not. If it not yet loaded, first it loads the class into the memory. So, loading the class means your class metadata encapsulated inside java dot lang dot class object. So, every Java class is loaded into the memory only one time. Okay? This is static loading. Then what about dynamic loading? Dynamic loading means we are not deciding the class in developing a program. We are deciding a class at runtime. At the time of executing the program, we are going to decide which class to be loaded into the memory. So, that is with the help of class dot for name statement. By using this, we are going to load a class into the memory class dot for name. So, if you see this statement here, class dot for name of, you can pass your class name here. So, whatever the class name we passed as an argument, that class is loaded into the memory dynamically. If a class is already loaded in the memory, it does not load again, it just ignore. So, 
class dot for name supports dynamic loading whereas new operator supports static loading that is the point to understand so this is one of the basic interview question also how many ways to load a class into the memory using two ways either by using new operator or by using class dot for name so what are the differences whenever if you are using new operator always we need to decide your class at the time of developing your program that is static loading whenever if you are using class dot for name statement we need to decide your class at the time of executing the program run time that is dynamic loading so class dot for name if you observe the statement clearly here class is a predefined class belongs to java dot lang package whereas for name is a static method belongs to this class so class is a predefined class class is a predefined class belongs to java dot lang package whereas for name is a static method belongs to this class to this for name method you need to supply your class fully qualified name as an argument fully qualified name means combination of package name plus class name suppose if your class is resided in the package that package name dot class name you need to pass as an argument that is fully qualified name if your class is a independent class means it is not resided in any package then you can pass your class name directly as an argument to the for name method remember this point what i am saying so basically you can understand about class dot for name statement as of now so driver loading is nothing but loading the class into the memory only in fact a driver is nothing but a class only who provide the driver third party external companies for example you can see sun dot jdbc dot odbc dot jdbc odbc driver this is uh, a fully qualified class name combination of package name dot class name jdbc odbc driver so the jdbc odbc driver this class is located inside sun dot jdbc dot odbc package sun is a root folder jdbc is a subfolder in the sun odbc is a subfolder in the jdbc inside this odbc folder there is a class called jdbc odbc driver who provide this driver sun microsystem only now it is oracle because it's integrated with oracle so this this package sun dot jdbc dot odbc is located inside rt dot jar file where it is located under jr slash lib folder so you can find this driver up to java 1.7 version only from 1.8 version onward this driver is no longer available so how to load this driver by using new operator or you can use like this also class dot for name sun dot jdbc dot odbc dot jdbc odbc driver of course we are passing the class name here statically in the double quotes we are passing you can pass like this you can pass dynamically also i will show you how to pass dynamically later so sun dot jdbc dot odbc is a package name jdbc odbc driver is a class name this combination is known as fully qualified name that you have to pass as an argument to the class dot for name then what this for name method will do for name method verifies whether this package is located in our current working directory or not find for that current working directory means where we are executing the program in which directory that is current working directory whether the directory contain this package or not no if it not available then control goes to your class path class path means 
in your environment variables whatever the class path you set it whether that means this package is located in that respective class path or not if it not at available then control goes to java library by default the control cannot goes to java library remember the point first always it is checking in the current working directory means where we are executing the program in that location if this package is not at available then control goes to your class path if your class path also doesn't contain this package then control goes to java library that is rt.jar file yes the jar file contain this package then from that package your class is loaded jdbc odbc driver class is loaded into the memory that means your driver class metadata metadata means what do you mean by metadata your class name what type of access specifier you applied for that class how many variables are there what are the method name how many constructors are there what are the constructor parameters which type of access specifiers you applied all these things comes in the part of metadata information only that information is encapsulated in the java.lang. so this is the way of loading a driver into the memory so what happens the driver is loaded internally that we'll see in the next session clearly about that and registering driver with the driver manager means what do you mean by registering a driver with the driver manager whatever the driver you loaded the driver information is registered into the driver manager means the driver manager is having a data structure internally a single dimensional array is there in that array which driver you loaded the driver information we are going to register in the driver manager in that array we are going to store so what is an advantage if we are storing the driver information in that array later on we can collect the driver we can select the driver to communicate with database so in that array you can store n number of drivers dynamically depends on your requirement which driver you want you can select the driver from that array that means from the driver manager and the driver you can connect with the target database so in this scenario without using driver manager also we can connect with the database i will show you directly by using driver we can connect with the database in that scenario no need to go for this class dot for name not required using driver manager we can establish a connection without using driver manager that means directly by using driver also you can connect with the database that point we'll see very clearly in the next coming session okay how the driver is loaded how the driver registered with the driver manager this internal story we'll see in the next coming session keep watching in the next coming session we'll see about the internal story how the driver is loaded how the driver registered with the driver manager we'll see about the internal steps very clearly okay the next session is very very important keep watching thank you